for those of you who have fab shops, have a, uh, an offsite facility. Um, we have this mantra, it's not a warehouse. I, I guess I would ask you to think about how many people in your organization would call it that. Oh, let's go over to the warehouse. I'll just send that back to the warehouse. It's a fab shop. It's not a warehouse. It's not a place to send back the excess materials from the field so we can hoard them in case we might need them on a job three years from now. Um, but we don't have an inventory management system for anyone to know it's there. So before you can even start really working on world class production, if you're walking around uh, your facility and it looks a lot like a construction site, then you need to put in place some workplace organization principles. Um, this is a quick win for many organizations. We've seen people out looking for new facilities. I'm gonna have to double my footprint. You know, I need 20 more thousand square feet. And the reality is it's sitting right there. Um, it's just, we are storing materials pre-pandemic. This, be, you know, before the supply chain pressures were that they were, this was still true. Um, so this is another really common place to start, um, and it is a real quick win. Anything to add there, Nick? We Yes. We have um, never done 5S with a customer, and the minimum that they have regained in floor space is 56%. That's the actual number. We're waiting for someone who has their, um, their stuff in one sock better than this, but it's a proven <laughs> system. It's a great place to start. And it just reinforces, and, and we, not only does, I mean, 5S, go ahead and look it up. I mean, we sort, we get rid of things we don't need. We set in order to create flow. We shine, we make perfect through daily use. And this means that we increase the lighting intensity in the facility. Um, we're looking at about 70 um, foot candles per square foot is like a, a really healthy standard. Um, it needs to be bright and crisp. The walls, we like them painted white. We want abnormal to stick out. This is what we want. We want the standard to be so crisp and good that abnormal stands out and you know exactly what's out of place. This uh, is other... what it means to build a manufacturing mindset. So this little thing starting here, people will take a different pride in their work. They'll want to do more and you'll be ready for three, four, and five. Yeah, like another example of this, I'm at a struck cutting uh, operation and there's a whole set of Allen wrenches there. One of the Allen wrenches is missing. I say to the person, what's wrong with this? They said, one of the Allen wrenches is missing. No, you only need two Allen wrenches. You have a set of 10. Why do you have eight other ones there to confuse things? The two that we need should be magnetically held to the device and they should be color coded so that the red handle of the Allen wrench is is color coded to the red nut that it's going to uh, adjust so we can change the die. Th that's the type of mistake proofing and simplicity that we're looking for. We are not the, we're not on the job site with a Rubbermaid cart that can handle anything. We're not a service uh, van that's trying to handle any problem that a customer might send at us. We're doing very specific work in the factory. This is where we can really get the gains and that leads into cell layouts and process optimization and mistake proofing those allen wrenches is an example of mistake proofing so someone might at the end of the day might go around looking for that allen wrench that we don't even need like talk about a waste <laughs>